my presentation today is going to be on accessible cell phones. I'm just imagining how many of you uh, professionals and or or folks who, who are not professionals who are just kind of curious about accessible phone, uh, cell phones. How many of you have heard or asked the question, what's the right phone for somebody who's blind or visually impaired as if and i'll just imagine that half of you at least are raising your hand um i seem to get that phone call at least once a week as if there's like some kind of a magic phone out there a very special phone for all of us who need a little extra magnification or a little extra text to speech and then the, the next thing I had on, on the slide was uh, there's an app for that. And I wrote it in strike through because that's actually kind of, it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine because I hear that a lot and we all say that a lot. And it's kind of the assumption, I think, that we all just use um, smartphones. And of course, with that smartphone, um, there is an app for that, for all kinds of different tasks, uh, daily living tasks, technology tasks, you name it, there is an app for that. But you know, for a lot of folks who aren't smartphone users, there's not necessarily an app for that, and they may not even want to hear that. They may too be tired of hearing that because they just want a phone that they can pick up and make a phone call with, really simple, and they don't really care about the apps. So with that said, I'm going to take a look at three types of phones, and, and they're my categories, but I think we're all familiar with flip phones. And then the next category I'm calling specialty phones. And the, the uh, category after that, of course, would be the smartphone. So I'm gonna start out with the, the, the flip phones that I found to be accessible. And what's interesting about the flip phone category is um, there aren't a whole lot of accessible uh, flip phones uh, for starters. And it's also a little hard to find them. And it's hard to find them for a couple of reasons. If you walk into a retail store, um, a lot of times, they're not out on the counter. And I think that that is because, of course, they want to sell you a smartphone. So they have to hunt around in the back room to find one. And then um, should you ask if it's accessible, you're, I think most of the time you're going to get this deer in the headlights look like, huh? So um, and and if you're a part of the, the press or media or in this case, like doing a presentation, trying to get your hands on one of these cell phones can be kind of challenging too these days. Uh, it, and I'm not exactly sure why. So um, that said, I'm going to start out. There were three cell phones that I found or three brands anyhow that I found that seem to be accessible to a certain degree. Now, as we know, the flip phone is a fairly simple phone. It folds in half, you open it up and it has a display on the top and then it has a, um, a number pad below it. And the first one that I wanna talk about is called the Alcatel Go Flip. Alcatel makes a couple of phones that I believe are accessible. I know in fact that the Alcatel Go Flip and that whole series is accessible as well as the Alcatel Smart Flip. And what makes it accessible is that it has a, a talking menu. If you go into the settings, you can turn on text-to-speech. And on the Alcatel phones, that text-to-speech is called the readout um, setting. And if you turn that on, then as you flip through the various menus, it's going to read out the menu. And the cool thing about the Alcatel flipped um, phone as well, from Amazon, it's $110, and I've seen it range in price from like 90 to 120. So it's a relatively reasonable phone. And the Alcatel um, Smart Flip is, I believe, a, closer to $50 if you can find it. It's a little bit older phone. And um, Alcatel does have a support phone number, and those are those are the, the, the very basic functions. It's also the Alcatel Go Flip V, 
which I believe stands for Verizon. Um, that phone is also uh, hearing aid compatible. Before we even decide whether or not we're going to look at um, either um, a flip phone or a specialty phone or um, a smartphone, we've got to know where the what what are the client's goals here, and you know um, what is it that they want to do with this phone? Because you may have that person who just wants to make the phone call, which I was talking about a moment ago with that flip phone. They just want something that's in their pocket so they can make and receive a phone call. They don't need any of the apps. They don't need to be texting or anything like that. So, you know, that's going to lead you in one direction. You also want to know, you know, what exactly are they going to be doing with the phone? Are they going to be traveling? Is it their primary home phone? Um, maybe is there Wi-Fi in the house that the phone would connect to? And the reason for that goes back to these, these networks. So if a person's traveling around, for example, in my state of Maine, if you're in the southern part of the state, the GSM network is fine. So, you know, I have a phone that's got T-Mobile on it and it works pretty good. If you're in the northern part of the state, forget about it. The GSM network is really hard to pick up. You really need the CDMA network. So again, it's like, is the client going to be traveling around and which networks are going to be um, most usable. And the, you know, one of the last things, and again, the assessment, we all know how to do assessments and there are a lot of questions, but you know, the last thing that I would consider in the assessment is what, what has that person been using for technology in the past? And the reason I ask that is, you know, if they're using an iPad or something like that, and they're accustomed to using the, um, the Apple iOS operating system, which is on the iPad, they're going to be fine with an iPhone for the most part. They might struggle a little bit more with an Android phone, which has got a different operating system and, and different gestures that you're going to be using. So, you know, find out what technology they've been using and you want to kind of stick to the technology that that individual is using, if you can, if that makes sense. And of course, there's always preference. And lastly, um, budget. You know, budget's a big consideration for a lot of folks. It, it is for the folks that I talk to often on the phone. So they want to hear about, you know, maybe a lower cost phone or they want to keep within a specific button or budget. And, you know, the flip phones sometimes can be really good for that. So uh, the Alcatel uh, Go Flip and Smart Flip phones, those are relatively accessible with text-to-speech on the menu. The next one that I discovered, which has also got text-to-speech on the menu, is the AT&T Singular Flip 4. And there's a picture of it on the screen, and I'll just describe it briefly. It's just a, you know, it's kind of a plain Jane um, flip phone, but you'll notice that it does have larger uh, buttons on the keypad, and it's got some high contrast white on black, which which is kind of handy. And this phone too is right around $50 according to Amazon. And because it's an AT&T phone, I think it's only going to work on that AT&T GSM network. And the last of these flip phones um, that we're going to talk about is the, the Kyocera. Now, I recall uh, several years ago, I understood that a couple models, the Kyocera phone were accessible. Um, in my research this time, I found only three models and these are the Dura models. It's a little bit thicker phone and it's really designed to be a rugged phone. Maybe for somebody who's in a, a work environment, outdoors, um, that sort of a phone. It too has um, some pretty, it's got larger buttons and high contrast. And as a result of it being kind of an, an outdoor or kind of a, a specialty flip phone, it is a little bit more expensive. I think it's in the range of $250 to $270, which is high for a flip phone. But um, I understand that the three Dura models, they're Dura X models, the Dura X Extreme, Dura X Equip, and the Dura X Epic 
uh, and each one of those just works on a different network. For example, the Epic works on the AT&T network, just as an example. Uh, I understand that all three of those models are accessible. They have text-to-speech on them. So that's going to take us into the specialty phones. Before I get to the specialty phones, though, just as kind of a wrap up on the flip phones, don't um, discount the flip phone as a viable option for uh, yourself or a client. Um, I, I've had a number of clients in the past who that's really all they wanted. The one downside to the flip phone, aside from you know the kind of the sketchy accessibility for some of them, is anybody who wants to do any texting, if you remember how difficult it was to text using just that keypad on a cell phone, that can be real tricky. So if they're into texting, then the cell phone may not be the way to go, uh, just as an FYI. So the specialty phones, um, they're kind of interesting and a great specialty phone to transition to, I call it a specialty phone, is the Jitterbug Flip 2. And I've got an image of the Jitterbug Flip 2 on the, the uh, screen. And it looks like the other flip phones, to be honest with you. It's got the display um, on one side of the cover and it's got the keypad on the other. The, the Jitterbug uh, Flip 2 also has kind of large buttons uh, fairly high contrast on the buttons. And um, the Jitterbug is interesting um, for a couple different reasons. The company is no longer called Jitterbug. They changed their name a couple of years ago. They changed it to Lively um, for whatever reason. And the, the cool thing about the Jitterbug is that you can pick that up in person at Walgreens, Rite Aid, or Best Buy. And you can also call their 800 number and purchase it. It's $99. And when I was doing a little research last week on this, it had actually been marked down 20% to something like $79 for grandparents day or week. So, you know, it is definitely a sub $100 um, a flip phone. And on my slide, I've got excellent phone support. And it really was, I needed to call phone support for a couple of reasons. I'm not a, I'm not a Jitterbug user, but I was trying to find some information out and possibly get a demo. And the individual who picked up the phone was just excellent. He was easy to understand. He spoke slowly. Um, he was easy to hear. Now, granted, he was, I think, hoping to sell a phone but it was a very, very subtle sales pitch. He was listening. And all I can say is in this day and age when, you know what I'm talking about, the customer service is hard to find. Um, this was quite exceptional. And I think for a lot of, of clients, it, um, it, it, it would be extraordinary. Um, so you can call that for more information and you can also make the purchase over the phone. Now, one of the interesting well, one, one of the disappointing features is that the Flip 2 used to have a piece of software that you would have to download that enabled the uh, enabled text-to-speech on the menu. And um, that is no longer available. So they do not have text-to-speech on the menu. So this is not going to be accessible out of the box. One of the workarounds, I guess, for their accessibility is, and forgive me because I'm going to mention the A-Lady here, but they have put the uh, an, a version of the Alexa app on the phone. So that is going to allow people to make some voice calls and, and use Alexa, I guess, for a wide variety of things. I didn't have a, an opportunity to try it. But again, there's no text to speech on the menu. And you'll be able to get some interesting things using the A lady. And I understand that you would be able to make a phone call using the A lady, like asking her to uh, make a phone call. I'm not clear because I didn't have a chance to try it out. Um, and the other interesting thing on the Jitterbug Flip 2 is apparently they have um, ride service with Lyft um, available. And with both the Amazon Echo or the A-Lady and Lyft, you of course are gonna have to do some registration prior to that working on the phone. But I think that they're both you know, pretty interesting apps. And 
I have a my next slide here, and I kind of put it alone on this slide because I think for the jitterbug, this is a really, really important feature for any consumers that, that might be considering this. Visually impaired customers um, with a doctor's note can get 24 seven operator assisted um, phone calls at no cost. Now that's a service that Jitterbug offers, but there is a charge for it and it's a substantial charge. If you've got that doctor's note and it's related to vision, that is all waived. And that's cool, really cool for some folks because you can use the operator to make a phone call. You just hit the, the zero button and you get the operator and he or she will make a phone call for you. And also the operator can, uh, can do a few other things like add contacts to your phone. So it's a really handy feature. And for that person who just wants to be able to simply make a phone call, that might do it, even though it's a relatively inaccessible phone, that feature alone, I think, um, will, will work for some clients. Um, so that wraps up the, um, the jitterbug flip. The next one that I have up on the screen here um, is the RAS Mini Vision 2. And there's a picture on the screen and I'll describe this. The RAS Mini Vision 2 now takes us out of the realm of the flip phones. I call this phone a candy bar style phone, and I recognize that I'm probably one of the very few people who uses that term. But what I mean by that is that it's a flat phone with a display at the top, and then there's some navigational elements right beneath the display, and underneath that, you've got a keypad. And the key, the 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 display on the the Mini Vision Two is a little bit larger than the flip phone, and it's a, a fairly decent display. Um, and the keypad, large buttons, high contrast, and it's pretty tactile. They've added different, like a, a different labeling structure on some of the keys uh, right out of the box. So it's really designed for somebody with a vision impairment. And it's pretty handy. I must say they've done a pretty decent job of labeling the phone. And the RAS Mini Vision 2 is uh, 4G compatible. And here are, we'll cover some of these features here. First of all, this phone is a GSM network only, meaning you're just going to be able to connect to AT&T, T-Mobile. Interesting, when you um, purchase the phone, I believe they send you a SIM card for Mint. Um, for three months. So there's three months of calling and, and I believe there's some limited data on that as well. Um, gives you a chance to try out the phone and also to try out maybe a different network if it's not something that you're accustomed to. The, the RAS Mini Vision 2 is $329. And you may be able to purchase this from, from uh, some specialty Places I'm not aware of it though. Um, you can purchase the RAS Mobility. You can purchase it right from the RAS Mobility website. Um, that's the the one place I know that you can get it from. And their website is really quite good because they offer a lot of great tutorials, and the user guide is right there on the website as well. So let's take a look at some of the features. Um, the RAS Mini Vision 2 has uh, some limited apps on it, which, and some of them are kind of kind of cool. You've got a money ID, you've got a very limited GPS, which is, I, I call it a where am I. You can take some notes, um, and with the notes, the RAS Mini Vision 2 offers dictation and um, voice recording as well. There's a voice recording act, uh, app. Now, you can do some voice operation with the Mini Vision 2. Um, it is kind of limited to a certain degree. Uh, for example, you can move through some of the menus or you might wanna say, um, if Steve was in your contact, you could um, press and hold the central navigation button. That brings up the opportunity to speak in, in, in a way, it's kind of like Siri. You press and hold it, you hear the beep, and then you say, um, call Steve or text Steve 
or you might say um, new note and the 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 note app would open and you could begin dictating the note so it is pretty limited the commands have to be pretty specific in order to get them to work um and the dictation the way it worked i want to say you had about 10 or 15 seconds to do your dictation and it stopped after that you would then have to uh press and hold that navigation button again to get to bring it up so it's um it has some of these features and some of them are limited. Uh, one of the great features though, is that it's quite accessible. So as soon as you turn it on, you have text to speech uh, as soon as the, the phone starts off. Now for the low vision user, you can turn the text to speech off if you'd like. And it also has um, some limited low vision features. So you can add some contrast, foreground and background color and you can also um, increase or decrease the font size. Now, because the screen is smaller, say, than a smartphone, uh, the, you know, there's there's kind of a trade-off on that. You know, once you start getting to a uh, larger text size, you're really only able to see a couple of words on the screen. The next specialty phone, and uh, we have Two, our next two phones are like the 800 pound gorillas, I feel like in the room. The, these are the phones that I think people are starting to talk about or have been talking about. And the first one we're gonna talk about here is the Blind Shell Classic 2. And I have a picture of that up on the screen. And you can see in some ways it looks a bit like the RAS Mini Vision 2 in that it is a candy bar style phone. It has a, it's got a larger display than the RAS Mini Vision 2, but you'll notice that you have the display, then you have some navigation keys left to right below it, and then you've got a keypad, and the keypad is, um, the keys are pretty large, high contrast. Uh, to be honest, I've I've had both of these phones, the Mini Vision and the uh, Blind Shell Classic, and um, this is a sturdier phone um, without question. Um, and it, it also has like a Bluetooth compatibility for hearing aids as well. And the classic two, I think of the specialty phones has really got a pretty good speaker on it. So it's, it's easy to hear and it's clear. So let's take a look at some of the features on the Classic 2. Um, the Classic 2 costs $489. And I'm starting to notice more and more places. I actually think I stumbled onto um, the Classic 2 at Walmart online, which just surprised the heck out of me. I thought it was pretty much only available from some specialty places, but we're starting to see it around a little bit more. In addition to the um, Classic 2, we also have the Blind Shell Classic, which is a bit cheaper, and that's $349. And the difference between the two is, um, a big difference is the camera. Um, there's also some other hardware differences. The Classic 2 has a much better camera, and I think it's been beefed up in a couple of other ways that um, are probably are not really important in terms of hardware. But for us, just know that the Blind Shell Classic, the older phone, has got less apps and lower quality camera. And you'll see in a moment why that's kind of important. So here are some of the features um, in the Blind Shell Classic 2. You can look at the Blind Shell Classic 2 really as a smartphone with buttons, or at least that's the way I think of it. You know, underneath the, um, the Blind Shell, it's an Android phone, but don't be confused. Just because it's an Android phone doesn't mean you can go to the Google Play Store and download apps. Both the Classic and the Classic 2 just use proprietary apps from the Blind Shell app catalog. So when you have the phone, you can go up to the app catalog and download them. Now, both phones have a bunch of apps. Um, the Classic 2 has got dozens. The Classic is a little bit more limited, but they have a, a lot of different apps that um, have to do with daily living technology you name it, and you're going to find some overlap between the both blind shells 
and um, some of the smartphones. The difference here is that everything is menu driven or voice driven with the blind shell um, as opposed to gesture based. Um, so on the classic two, you know, some of the big news features on the classic two is that uh, the blind shell classic two has just added Ira and the A lady. Um, and the Ira thing is just really huge. And that's one of the reasons that the um, it, it couldn't be done on the classic. So I don't believe the classic supports it simply because the camera quality just wasn't up to those standards. So, and of course you're gonna be, you would have to pay for Ira on its own, but um, I think it's just really cool that they are just making those forward steps. And you're going to find all kinds of other apps in both of these phones. You're gonna find internet radio, and one of the cool things about the internet radio I discovered on the on the Blind Shell Classic when I was uh, reviewing that is you can, you know, once you're connected to uh, Wi-Fi or cellular data, you can get uh, radio reading services with the FM radio. So it's really an incredible communication tool in addition to being able to make, you know, phone calls, send texts and emails. And on the Classic 2, you're, you're going to find apps for the web, for YouTube, and email. And I believe that the, the Classic even had email as well. So you're, you're really seeing um, a lot of power in the blind shell, even though it's a phone with a dial pad. So for a lot of people who want that dial pad, but want the power, say, of a smartphone, this is a really great phone. And um, th that said, you may want to keep in mind that as you start getting into all of these apps, and I found this when there was a bit of a learning curve with the blind shell in the sense that it took a little while to figure out how to navigate it because you do have so many menu items. And I can see clients finding this phone almost conf as confusing perhaps as a smartphone. So that would be the one thing that I would consider. It's like with all of these apps, we also have a new level of complexity that you didn't have say with the RAS Mini Vision 2. And um, I think uh, the last note I have here um, is that yes, indeed, there is text to speech as soon as you turn the blind shell on. And like the Mini Vision 2, if you're a low vision user, you can just turn that off so it's not there all of the time. And it has quite a few low vision settings too, so that you can um, uh, add a lot of high contrast uh, foreground, background color, and um, also increase the text size. Again, like the Mini Vision 2, you're going to find as that text size gets a little bit larger, though, you have. Um, less words that are going to appear on the display. The great thing too is that a user guide is built right in. So you don't have to go far to find that user guide. Um, the uh, a disadvantage to the blind shell is it, according to its um, what's on its website, it is just supporting the T-Mobile network now I'm assuming, but don't take my, my word for it. I'm assuming that means that it's it's GSM compatible. So if you had a SIM card from say AT&T or Mint, that too would work, but I'm not sure. That's something that I would definitely check with uh, AT guys or info at blindshell.com. It may be that it just works with the T-Mobile network. So for somebody who doesn't have a good connection to the T-Mobile network, that is going to be a little tricky. And um, you'll find there are a fair number of support tutorials and user guides um, on their website. And I think that there are some support tutorials as well, right on YouTube, which is pretty handy. Okay. So the next newcomer to the specialty field is a phone called the Real Sam Pocket. And I do have a picture of the phone up on the screen. 
And the real SAM pocket looks very much like a smartphone, but um, on the picture here, we don't have a bunch of icons. We have one large a button at the bottom. It's not a tactile button. It's just a button on the screen that says tap to talk. And the, the real SAM is designed to be a voice operated a phone. And the reason it looks like a conventional smartphone is because the real SAM is built on one of two Android Samsung Galaxy phones. So I think of the Samsung Galaxy piece of it as a handset. I don't even think of this phone as an Android phone because you you just probably the experience is completely different and it's meant to be so let's take a look briefly at the real sam phone so it as i said it's a voice operated android phone and it's they say it's unlocked so it should support both gsm and cmda network so um literally anything, any SIM card you put in, it should work. When the phone ships, it too ships with a Mint card, Mint SIM card, I believe, um, which is a GSM card. Now, if you want more information on the real SAM, the website is okay. Um, there's a couple of, of uh, tutorials, um, and I believe that you can find the user guide on the website. It's a little bit more um, sales oriented. And one of the cool things you are going to notice on the website, if you go, is you can make an appointment to get a demo of the real SAM. And I would highly, highly recommend that to anyone who's interested in it, because you're going to see the real SAM has got some pretty innovative features, but the real SAM also has some drawbacks in, in the sense that. It's, its strongest, uh, its greatest strength is communication using voice operation. Um, let's explore just a little bit more here. So it has very limited apps, okay? But, you know, one of the, um, one of the most important apps that it has on there, I think, is the Be My Eyes app, which is really interesting because it kind of shows the power of the real Sam. Um, as, uh, as we noticed in the, um, the image, the, the way the real Sam works is when it comes up, you'll get a, a voice prompt and basically, um, tap to speak. And that buttons the lower, say 20%, lower 25% of the screen. And all you have to do is hit that one time. And you can get you can get things started by by saying hello pocket, and it will kind of give you a couple of voice prompts to things that you can do. But you would hit that button and you would say be my eyes, and the first time through you're going to have to you'll have to go through a couple of prompts because basically it's going to connect you to their website and you've got to do an agreement with them. But what's really great is it goes ahead and registers you and they must do some kind of a, a bulk registration thing or something, but it was incredibly easy and you really don't need to do anything other than tap and agree to the, the various prompts that you get. And once you get through it by asking for be my eyes, it goes ahead and it actually makes that phone call and you're connected to the volunteer as you would be with any smartphone. So I was really impressed with that process. The other, the other cool feature I found was a where am I feature. So when you're out and about, you can just tap the screen and say, where am I? And get uh, one of the closest addresses. So if you get turned around and you're outside, you can, you can find that. Um, Getting back to the communication features, though, um, it just enables you really to be able to make a voice phone call. And, you know, if you have ever tried to add contacts on an Android phone or an iPhone using TalkBack or VoiceOver, you will definitely appreciate this. Um, you can just tap, tap the button and ask to add a contact. 
give the first name and the phone number all at the same time or separately. And it's added to your contacts. And you can also ask for a list of your contacts. You can ask to make a phone call, ask to send a text message. All of those things can be done pretty easily with voice. It was not as natural language as I was hoping for. And I, I suspect that that will probably improve. And all that means is you, you kind of have to, to know some of the commands um, before you, you get the right response. But once you learn those commands, say from the user guide, um, it goes pretty smooth. The other interesting features um, is that you can do books and podcasts um, on the real Sam. As I mentioned before, we've got voice operated calling and contacts. Um, there is a basic video magnifier with OCR on the phone. And what's interesting about this phone, I think, is that yes, um, it's being promoted as a voice operated phone. But uh, for example, with this app, the magnifier app, and literally one of the first things that you're gonna have to do is connect it to Wi-Fi. With certain features of the phone, you are going to end up having to use a keyboard or a gesture. So there's kind of no way out of this. So um, both with, uh, the magnifier is pretty simple in the sense that it comes up and it's got a couple of menu items that you would find by putting your finger on the screen, you'll hear the, the menu item and you'll lift your finger and you can do what you want. Plus and minus work the same way. There's an OCR kind of limited functionality on it. Um, but you are going to be using the gestures or at least exploring the menus. Getting back to the Wi-Fi feature, um, with the Wi-Fi features, when you first want to install Wi-Fi, if you ask for it, the first thing you get is a screen full of characters. Um, it's a huge keyboard. It's got like all the characters that you can imagine, capital, small, small letters, uh, and, and all kinds of other characters that you might use for a password. You put your finger on the screen, you hunt for the character, lift your finger, and it inputs it. It does take a little bit of time to get used to it, particularly if you're not accustomed to that from using a smartphone. Um, and it also has um, a menu. So if you do an L-shaped gesture on the phone, slide down and over to the right without lifting your finger, it brings up some uh, menu items, which again, you can take your finger and go down to the menu item and lift your finger. The one thing I would highly recommend if you are not a sighted user is do not go into the sighted menu option because, um, and I, I'm hoping that this is something that changed. If you get in there and you're not accustomed to an Android phone and you don't know that there's a back button, you're gonna be in there for a while because nothing is spoken in there and nothing responds to touch. You would literally just need to turn the phone off, reboot it and start it again. Not a big deal, but it might take you a while to figure that out. So um, don't think that there are absolutely no gestures involved in the real Sam. The price on the real Sam, and I believe you can just get it from the website, is uh, $1,399, $1,399. And again, I would, I would strongly suggest a, a demo if you're new to um, the real Sam and just want to see um, what it can do. Let's just take a quick look at the smartphones. And I think that we're kind of familiar with a lot of the the smartphones, or at least those are the things that we, we hear a lot about. So the first one is the Apple iPhone. We're um, fairly familiar with that. And, uh, you know, the iPhone has got a new SE version, which is cool because it's got a home button. It's also one of the least expensive of the new iPhones. I believe it starts at 429, which is kind of great. Um, a couple of things that I, I really think are worth pointing out. The iPhone is is for those people on a budget, a lot of people will balk at the iPhone. As you can see from this slide, the um, the iPhone 14 is, is a thousand bucks now. So it's kind of expensive. Just know that there's an Apple refurbished site. It's Apple certified refurbished. And for a lot of folks, I think that can be a really good alternative. Apple VIS is a wonderful website for finding reviews 
and all kinds of things on um, related to the iPhone and the iPad. This is one of the numbers that I'm hoping everybody copies down. It's the number for Apple accessibility. And I think it's one of the reasons to consider an Apple iPhone. If you're using any of their accessibility features, you can call that number and there's no cost and you can speak to you know, a techie who can help you out. They can even log into your phone and make some changes to your settings. So that's a number that I give out several times a week um, at my job. And I think it's wonderful. They're, they're, it's, it's a great support, good customer service. And of course, I would be remiss here if I didn't mention um, Hadley. And the, Hadley has got several iPhone um, workshop series, but the ones for new, new users are um, the low vision features series and the uh, listen with voiceover series. And just so you know, for, for clients who are not on the internet, they can call Hadley 800-323-4238. Um, and they can sign up free. And they can also get them those workshops delivered on a talking book cartridge. They can get it in Braille or large print as an alternative. And for some folks, I think that's the best way to go. These are pretty good workshop series for beginners. The iPhone is different than the next phone that I'm going to talk about, which is the Android phones for um, a couple of reasons. The Android phones, uh, when I say an Android phone, I mean a smartphone that is using the Google Android operating system. And there are a wide variety of these from very cheap to very expensive. And the the Google Pixel phone and the Samsung Galaxy phones seem to be what I would consider the standard, at least for accessibility, meaning um, it's fairly dependable. Um, I don't quite know how to describe it. Um, when you get some of the other phones, sometimes they don't even have the accessibility suite installed because they leave it up to the... Um, the individual um, retailers or, or manufacturers what to put in. I guess that's one of the pluses to the Android, but it's also one of the minuses. So if you get one of those inexpensive phones, you're not exactly sure what you're going to be getting. But the, the Galaxies and the Pixels are the standards and the Pixel ranges in price from $450 to $900. And the Galaxy will is between $1,000 and $1,400. They're high end. They do have some lower end Samsung phones that start at about $150 for people. I've got some resources that I think are really important for anybody who's using the um, Android phones. Unfortunately, um, there's no accessibility phone number for the Google Android phones, which is, as I said, unfortunate. It's not like the, the Apple accessibility. Um, but Google does have access. They've got an accessibility website, and there's two ways to actually get a phone call. If you have the free Be My Eyes app on your Android phone, you can actually make a phone call by going into the app and it has some specialty phone numbers under technology. Click there and you will find, you'll be able to make a live phone call to somebody at Google Accessibility. I've used it several times, very handy, very useful. And if you also go to the Google Accessibility website and they have a, a way to request a call from Google Accessibility. And the cool thing for those of us who are professionals, we can put in somebody else's phone number, name, and have Google make a phone call to them. When I did it, the phone call was made within a minute. So, you know, you want to ask permission or whatever and make sure that that person is ready to receive a phone call. But that might be a way for somebody who's not connected to the internet to actually speak to somebody at Google Accessibility. And you can also email them and, um, there's a last resource for the Android phones is the blind Android users 
team. And if you look them up, Blind Android Users Team or Blind Android Users Group on the web, you'll find that they have a website. And I've actually had them answer a couple of my calls uh, or not calls, but emails, and they were really helpful. The Android tends to be a little bit more difficult sometimes to get assistance with. And lastly, uh, of course, uh, Hadley does have two workshop series for beginning Android users, um, Listen with Talkback series and the Android Low Vision feature series. And like the ones for the iPhone, those are available on the cartridge or um, large print or in Braille. I, the, only, the only other thing that I would add here, um, quick, quick note about apps. On Android, Google Lookout is wonderful. It's very similar to seeing AI, both seeing AI for the iPhone and Android Lookout have different channels, including OCR, object recognition, and barcode scanning, which I think are extraordinarily helpful. And they're both free apps. So for the smartphone users, those are great things to suggest to clients to get.